Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use Visual Studio's Code's live share feature in order to have two people work or look at and work on the same source code uh, as shared from one computer to another. Uh, so let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need is you'll need the Visual Studio's Code live share extension. So on the left hand side, I'm going to go to extensions and then type in live share. And then I want the live share extension here. I'll install that. And now it's installed. Um, you may need to reload if it's the first time you've installed it. So now that it's installed, I can go down here. It's added a new icon on the left hand side. I'll click on that for live share. And if I wanted to create a session that I can have other people join, I could do that from here. Um, I'm going to actually go through and I'm going to um, join a, an existing session. But before I can do that, if I double click on it, for example, or somebody down here at the bottom, that I need to either continue as anonymous or I can sign in. I recommend you sign in. Um, that'll help um, kind of maintain a consistent portfolio of or presence, I guess, in your, con your um, connections. Or um, if you're going to create a new one and you're going to share it, I think you do need to log in. But I'm going to go as, as anonymous here. And I'm just going to now join on a link that I've already created. Let's try that one again. And it doesn't want to paste. So I'm just going to go back here. There we go. Try it again. It automatically grabs whatever's on the clipboard. So I'll go with that. And now it's logging me in to my little demo. So we can see here on the left, on the main part, is these are the windows that are opening. Um, they're the ones that were open inside of the project on my other machine. And it's waiting here for access. And I have to grant access for this anonymous guest. Uh, I will accept as I'm going to start off with um, I'm going to go with read write. I'll click a box on my other screen that allows me to pick whether it's read or read write. So I granted read write access. Um, I can do that through the live share view down here on the left. On my other machine, it's going to show me a kind of who's connected and so forth. And I've got the options there to grant read or only or read write permissions. So we can see what's being shared. Um, I've currently connected here as this is the other machine and where they're currently looking. So if I double click on this, it will take me to wherever they're at on the code. I think, let me see if I right click, I'll say follow participant actually. And so here is where we are in the other code. And if I go in here, for example, and I scroll, we can see that I'm scrolling not on the machine you're watching, but on the remote machine. And so we're following that. I can turn that off. For example, I can click off this follow participant. And now when I scroll on my other machine, nothing happens locally. If I move around to switch between files, nothing happens on that. So that's another way to get control depending on what you want to do. If you're just there to watch a video, uh, watch what someone else is doing, probably want to click on that to see what they see. If you want to be investigating something else, like some failure or investing in the code, or even co-authoring some of the project, um, you don't necessarily need to follow them around. Okay, um, now what you can also do is I will get rid of this code here. Maybe that, um, if I go here to the Project Explorer, this shows me the whole um, workspace that's being shared from the other machine. So I can go in here and I can look at a different file. So I'll go under here and look at line facts, for example. Nope, that's an executable. Let's try the other one linefacts.cpp. And if I go, oh, hey, maybe I just figured out what the problem is. This is, I want, I want to show the other person this here. They're not by default following me. What I can do is I can request that they come to my location. So I can go to live share, and then I can click on this sort of uh, button here. It says focus participants. And that will focus the other participants on this line of code, and it will jump to the, where they are. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'll do it on the other machine. Actually, let me just scroll to a different place highlight this and I will then do uh, focus participants and we can see that we kind of jump to that thing that say hey this is the thing I want you to see so that's kind of cool to look at different files and work through that let's go back to the functions one um, I do here have a terminal open let me close all these terminals mm, terminal and so just sort of show you from the beginning if you didn't have any terminals up and running it look like this so I close that on the remote machine on the remote machine I will say terminal new terminal and now we have here a terminal. We can see if we have read write only, we said this PowerShell that's being shared is read only. And so I can't type into it. So it says you can't type in. 
Um, but I can, for example, run a command on the other side. Echo, hello. I have found that the uh, output in the screen here is not particularly reliable with like uh, line feeds and so forth, but it does the job. Okay, so that's good. So we can see what's going on. What happens when I build it? So this is just a straight C, uh, C project. So I'm going to build this on my other machine. And where is it going now? Let me try that again. Terminal, and I want to uh, run build. So it's right now building. If I can, I find that. There you go. Oh, it's not actually showing the output. But anyway, it built correctly. And now I'm back to the command prompt. I can show you what happens when I run it. So this is inside of. Let me get the right folder here. So that's the weak for demo and you can see that as I'm typing on the other machine it's coming up on here and I'll see what I've got and this was functions.axe it runs and we can see it doesn't quite look very great there it's just a standard C++ program using um, CNC out but it works enough to maybe get by in the remote system I cannot um, trigger a uh, build I don't believe I can do that it won't let me do the trigger the build on the remote system. And of course, I've only got remote access. Now on the other side, a read-only access. I can grant, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to on my uh, other end, allow this to be marked as read write. So now we can see that this is just updated. That was done by the host. And so now into this terminal, I can actually type locally. So I can say like echo uh, hi. And now I have granted at least this user the ability to run things. And so I can, on this keyboard, uh, for example, run functions.exe. And now I can do it if I wanted to, gain control of that, because it's been granted by the uh, host. Now, because I'm in a read-write session, I have the ability to edit the code here. So I can go through and say, oh, let's add a new, let's go down here, for example, above main. Where's main? I got this function foo, I'm gonna return zero and we'll add a new one bar. So let's put in bar here. So void bar and you know uh, int x equals 10. If x is equal to, let's do this, x single equal 11. C out, oops, of course classic C++ bug. Imagine this was in the code to begin with. So on my other machine, I'm going to build it and then run it. So run build. It's not actually showing the output here. Now we can see that it's actually getting quite a few different uh, errors. Why is this not happy? Hmm. No operator match. Oh, and L. That's why. Edit the file. Build it. Run the build again. Now it's giving me here a warning because I do have warnings enabled, but it's still going to build okay. So give me a hint here what the problem is. A lot of people don't pay attention to those. They should, but they don't. Let's imagine we're trying to figure out what's going wrong as to why are we printing out oops. So if I run the program, I'm going to do the run here from the remote system. We can see it prints out oops. I'm like it shouldn't do that. X is 10. What's going on? So we can set a breakpoint. So I'm doing this on the one, the, uh, the kind of client here. I can set the breakpoint, and then on the host, I can say, okay, let's run that. So start debugger. You can see the debugger has started. It's gone through, it's built it. Debugger's up and running, slowly. There we go. And now we're getting full debug access to this in progress. We've set our own breakpoint here, which is transmitted to the host of the system, and it's running it. And as we go along, well, this is inside foo. I already set a breakpoint in foo previously, it seems. So I can step this. I can now, as the client coming into this, I can now control the debugger because I was guaranteed read-write access. So I'll step over this. I'm hitting F8, or whatever the hockey is normally. And I'll jump into here. And we can see that it comes into here and say, okay, well, what happened? Why is that? So I can mouse over it and see, well, what is the value of x? x is 11, which maybe gives me enough of a clue as to how we got here. I can say, okay, that's great. 
Um, I can restart it and all the other good things that I might want to do. On my other system, I'm going to close and stop the debugger. Okay, so I think that's most of what I wanted to show here. You can do kind of collaborative editing and uh, authoring of code. Uh, so if you want to work on a uh, project at the same time with their group mate, you can use uh, live share to kind of concurrently edit the code. You do need to cooperate in terms of, okay, I've got it here. Um, let's save it, let's build it. You are not like Git where you are able to work on separate branches or you know kind of commit and so forth. You're concurrently editing at the same keyboard effectively. Um, so you have to be a little bit more cautious about, okay, let's, let's run this in 10 seconds. Okay, finish your change, that kind of thing. Um, when you're done, you want to end the ses session. Um, you can see at the bottom here that we are a guest user and it gives us some information about it. We're in a session with one person. Um, when you're actually sharing, it'll give you some other information at the bottom about, okay, what's happening. The easy way to tell what's going on if you go to the live share uh, tab, and then you can say, okay, I want to, for example, at the moment, I'm going to leave this set session. If this is on the host side, they would click leave the session and it would end the session. So I'll do that here and we can see that it closes. We go back to our previous project. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.